Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 5, The First Consequences of the Fundamental Theorem of Similarity. So this first classwork, it's an exercise. So try to do this from what you learned from last class or the last video, if you watched it on video. Pause this video, see if you can do the exercise, and then come back and see how you did. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this now. It says in the diagram below, point P right here and point Q right here has been dilated from a center O. They did not show where O is by a scale factor of R. We don't know the scale factor. Segment PQ is parallel to segment P prime Q prime. So this is parallel to that. It's not a very good arrow. So they are parallel. The length of PQ is 5 centimeters. And the length of P prime Q prime is 10 centimeters. A says to determine the scale factor R. So R equals the image divided by the pre-image. So if I fill out this formula and we're given that the image which is P prime Q prime would be P prime Q prime divided by the length of PQ. So therefore R has to equal 10 centimeters divided by the five centimeters, which equals two. So this was a scale factor of two, scaled up two. So this line segment is half the length of this, or the image is twice the length of the pre image. Now B says to locate the center O of the dilation, measure the segments to verify that OP prime is equal to R times OP and OQ prime is equal to R times OQ. Show your work below. Okay, so what we need to do is use our ruler. So I'll get the ruler out. Move that down here. I need to draw a ray but in this case, I don't know where the starting point is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it in the opposite direction and it's going to go beyond. So I'm kind of drawing a ray backwards, if you will. So if I rotate this, trying to be as precise to that center of P prime, there we go. And so I'm going to draw a line this way. I don't know where the, wherever these two lines intersect is where our O center is going to be. So then if I, put my ruler as close to the center of this point, Q, as possible, rotate this around to Q. Now I can see where my O is, so I'll change colors here, and I'm going to start right there and then draw a line segment this way. So this is my ray going this way, and it would continue this way as well. So this intersection point right here is where my center O is. So I found the center given the image and the pre-image by just finding where those two rays would intersect. Okay, so now what they wanted us to do is measure all these segments to verify. So I am going to bring this ruler back and I'm going to measure the length of O, Q. So I'll put this right at zero. And it's right about there. And it's 45 is here, so that looks like about 46 millimeters, or 4.6. Now, keep in mind that yours might be different because when I made this, um, when I made this PDF into a smart notebook, my scale may have changed a little. So if you're using the module, you would probably get a little bit different than this because this is possibly scaled up. So OQ is 46 millimeters in length. Now what I need to do is measure OQ prime. So if I come down here and put it on there, I get 91 to 92 millimeters. So OQ is equal to 46 millimeters and 92 millimeters, what I just measured, is OQ prime. And 46 times 2 is 92. So that is true. Now I'm going to rotate this, and I'm going to measure 
OP. So I put my ruler as close to the center of that as possible. Rotate this back onto the line, and it looks like 36 millimeters. So OP, the length of OP equals 36 millimeters. So if this is a scale of two, my O prime or OP prime should be 72 millimeters, and it is right about 72. Okay. So OP prime's length is 72 millimeters. Now remember, yours might be a little different. Okay. So now it says to determine the scale factor we've done. And then B says to locate the center of O, which we just did. And the measures are shown above. And now it says measure the segments to verify that OP prime. So now we have to verify that. So I'm going to say OP prime equals R times OP. We're verifying this. So I'm going to substitute in all of my measurements. So OP prime is 72 millimeters. And that has to equal my R, which was 2, times my OP prime, or OP, which was 36 millimeters. And 72 millimeters equals 70, that's a 6, 72 millimeters. So they do equal each other. I will do the same now with OQ prime. So OQ prime... We're trying to verify that it's equal to the, um, the R, which is our scale factor, times the length of OQ. So OQ prime is 92 millimeters, or 9.2 centimeters. R was 2, and we want to verify that it is 2 times this OQ, which was 46 millimeters. So this is also true. 92 millimeters equals 2 times 46, which is also 92 millimeters. Okay, so we just verified these two equations. Exercise 2. Now it says in this diagram below, you are given a center O and a ray OA. So here's my center O at the origin. Here's a point A. Here is a ray going through OA. And point A is a dilate is dilated by a scale factor of R equals four. What do you know about the what do you know about fundamental theorem of similarity to find the location of point A prime? Okay, so we know that the scale factor is four. So whatever the length of OA is, A prime must be four times as long. Now instead of using my ruler in this case, notice that my Ray is going right through the point 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on. So these are diagonals. Now, if my line was going over like this, we'll say, and we were skipping and we're going through and we weren't hitting all of these corners here, in other words, they weren't integers, then we wouldn't be able to do what I'm going to show you now. This is kind of a shortcut. I can count how many diagonals there are here, and it is 1, 2, 3. Another way we could look at this is we knew the Pythagorean theorem. And we've already done the Pythagorean theorem. And this is a length of 3. So if that is my A, my side A, and this is a length of 3, and that is my side B, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 3 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared. 9 plus 9 equals C squared. 18 equals c squared, so the square root of 18 is equal to c. So if I multiply this by 4, then my a prime, the length of o a prime, should equal 4 times the square root of 18. And the square root of 16 is 4, point, is four so the square root of 18 is a little more than 4. So if I multiply that by 4, then I should be more than 16 or about 17, maybe. Another way we can look at this is if I just count the diagonal, since it's going through every diagonal corner here on the grid, then if that is 1, 2, 3, then 4 times 3 is 12. 
12. So my A prime would be right here. And I'll verify that with my ruler and bring this down. And I will put the ruler 0 at 0. So I'm showing you many ways to do this. If I bring this right up onto the line and measure out to here, well, this is 4.9. So OA equals 4.9 centimeters. So 4 times OA equals OA prime. Then 4 times 4.9 equals OA prime. 9 times 4 is 36. 4 times 4 is 16. Plus 3 is 19.6 is OA prime. And if I look here, there's 19. 0.5, it is right about there. My circle, this may be only 4.8, but it's it's very close to that measurement. Okay, but A would definitely be right on the point 12, 12, because it's three to four times 0.3 comma three. Okay, here's exercise three. Hopefully you've tried this already. Pause the video if not. In the diagram below, you are given center O at the origin and ray OA. Point A is dilated by a scale factor of 5 twelfths. Okay, so there's our scale factor of 5 twelfths. Use what you know about the fundamental theorem of similarity to find the location of point A prime. Okay, 5 twelfths is less than 1. So when R is less than 1 and greater than 0, then it's a dilation and it is a decrease. Okay, it will get smaller. So if I have to, if I go over 12, okay, and I'll do this a different way in this one. Let's just focus on the x coordinate. So if I move my ruler up vertically, the y value of my point A prime is, first of all, let's mark that, this is the point 12 comma 8. And the number 12 in the x value means that we went to the right 12 units away from our center O. So if I draw a line right here okay that is 12 units away so if we think of it as this way this is a ray going this way from the center and this is a ray going this way from the center we have this line segment well if we dilate it down it is going to be parallel to the original line segment and it's going to be our units closer so a scale factor of 5 twelfths means that what was 12 is going to become 5 so if I was doing one half, what was two would become one and so forth. So this is, we have a 12 in our point. So if I move over to five, if I scale this down five twelfths, five twelfths of five. So let's think of it this way. The length of O X, I will call it. Okay, this is my X value 12. The length of my O X is 12 or the point 0, 012 is 12 units long. So if I take 5 twelfths, actually let me write it like this, then O X prime is going to equal 5 twelfths of the length of that, and I'm going to represent that as a fraction 12 over 1. The twelves cancel, so then O X prime is going to equal 5. So if I draw another line, vertical line at x equals 5, if I come over 5 and draw my vertical line here, okay, then I know that this segment, by the fundamental theorem of similarities, if I dilate a line segment, it's still a line segment, it's going to be r units shorter, 
and it's going to be parallel to my original line segment. So this line segment is parallel to this line segment. So now it says, what do you know about, find the location of A prime. Well, A prime is right here. So I know that that is a point five comma some y. Well, we can find y as well. I could also have gone up this direction and found a line this way that was eight units away from the origin and then shrink it down 512. So I'm not going to draw the line, but this would then show the x or the y value of my a prime. So what I can say is the length of o y would equal 8. Okay, o y is 8. So if I had this line right here, that would be the point, or not o y, that would be a y axis right here. So not O Y, but yes, it'd be O Y. That's true. The line segment would be here. The length from O to the Y value of my point is eight. Then how long is O Y prime? Now it's kind of hard to do it this way because we're going to be moving a vertical line closer and we're using, I guess we could do that. Let me draw that and we'll do it. So if I draw a segment okay there's my segment so the length of this actually is not going to well I don't know if I want to do that that way because this is still a length of 12 so I won't do it that way but we can find this point y by saying that the if y was 8, so how about I write it like this? The y value was going to go from 8 down to something. So let's just do the shortcut and say that we're going to multiply by the r. So I want to know what 5 twelfths of 8 is. Well, 4 will go into 8 twice, and 4 will go into 12 three times. 5 times 2 is 10, and 3 times 1 is 3. So that's 3 and 1 third. So if I look at this, I went up 3 and then 1 third, and that is my y value. So it's going to be 3 and 1 third. Okay, that is the end of Lesson 5. Review the summary and go do your problem set.